Right now, it's my pleasure to welcome Michael Grieve to the stage. Michael, do not get up yet. I need to talk about you for a minute. Michael is an internet innovator who has founded numerous successful internet companies, including web.de and lastminute.de. And if you're listening to those suffixes, you have surmised that he is from Germany. And he is currently the CEO of Kaizu Technology Ventures. Michael's had quite a successful career in tech, but he's moving now to a new mission, a mission to help extend healthy lifespans and to help us all be part of the first generation to genuinely cure age-related disease. As CEO of the Forever Healthy Foundation, he recently made a $5 million grant commitment to our organization, and he's further pledged that at least another $5 million will be made available to seed fund potential startups in rejuvenation arising out of that work. That grant, by the way, really puts us in a very nice position. We get to announce the Project 21 campaign, and I get to announce that I have it 10% funded simultaneously. Michael and his colleagues are really going to help us make Project 21 a reality, and he's going to talk to us for a bit today about his perspectives and his motivations, so please join me in welcoming Michael Grieve. So, um, hello everybody and thanks for having me here. It's really a great pleasure to be among all of you. And um, as Mike said, um, I'd like to share my perspective uh, on uh, the whole rejuvenation biotech industry and what made me uh, uh, come to the decision on do that investment and contribute to the Sense Research Foundation. Uh, maybe a, a bit history about myself. Um, Personally, I'm extremely grateful that I've been born in this time right now. Um, I've been in tech for more than 30 years now, and I've seen the flourishing of the PC, um, the internet, um, smartphones, cloud computing, um, the rise of the post-PC area, the internet of thing things, and now the beginning of virtual reality and uh, augmented reality. For me, as an entrepreneur, it has been a super amazing ride. And um, to be able to experience all this development f uh, first, uh, firsthand um, was, a, was an amazing thing. I could co-found several of the major internet companies in Germany, took one of my companies public, and uh, basically sold all of them, um, moved over into venture capital, and now I'm uh, happy to uh, finance and uh, more, even more importantly mentor some of the coolest startups that we have in Germany. So this is something that I'm really, really helpful, uh, uh, thankful uh, every day. Um, my personal, uh, oops. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, my personal journey into life extension and uh, my personal life extension started more than 10 years ago uh, when I uh, had to shred numerous extra pounds. I was more than 20 kilos overweight and I had, I had a super uh, unhealthy lifestyle. I was smoking three packs of cigarettes. I was basically living on Red Bull, pizza, red wine, you name it. So I was the well, poster child of being an uh, overweight and unhealthy hacker. So, um, and uh, it started out as a personal um, a journey, but over time it became my number one uh, priority and basically my full-time project is to figure out the best way to use all of uh, today's uh, available med medical knowledge to stay as healthy as possible for as long as possible. And um, one amazing thing happened when I was researching on all these medical um, uh, topics on how to keep myself healthy, um, that, that I realized that the same um, uh, revolution that we have seen in, in IT technology um, was silently t taking place in, in biology, in, in, in genetics, and in medicine. And so that was a real, real uh, enlightenment experience uh, for me to see that. And uh, I realized that no matter how spectacular our technology, technological development has been so far, um, the things that are going to happen in the future uh, are going to be 10 times, 100 times more exciting than everything that ha has happened so far. And um, I realized that we as a, as, a, as a whole, as humans, are at a real turning point of, of, of human history. That's what I really believe is I think we have a real, real chance to be um, uh, the first generation that can cure aging. 
and that's going to be a huge, huge thing for all of us. And it's a huge opportunity, and I think we should all do our best to take this, uh, to use this opportunity to our full advantage. So I asked myself, how do we make this happen for us? Um, for me, the first logical step as a techie was to create a process on to keep myself healthy. And uh, by creating the best personal life extension strategy um, that, was that is available at any given time, uh, apply it to myself and constantly improve it. And since I'm from the internet and software business, um, I imagine it should be open source free for everybody to use. So what I saw is that um, there's already a lot of uh, medical knowledge out there uh, uh, that we can use to improve a healthy lifespan. Unfortunately, it's buried in research results, distributed over numerous websites, blogs, news feeds, uh, books, uh, you name it. So it's extremely hard to gather reliable, holistic and weighted information. Um, uh, uh, on how to keep oneself healthy. So uh, what I started was a project, um, uh, the Forever Healthy Knowledge Base, and uh, you will find that on, our, on the website on, on Forever Healthy. Basically, the idea is to uh, com collect and combine and harmonize the world-leading knowledge from all relevant, um, from all relevant uh, areas uh, on how to stay healthy um, and to provide um, holistic and actionable information uh, in an easy to follow step-by-step -step way. Um, what we try to do is we try to empower uh, everybody to make educated decisions about one's own health and um, uh, this becomes uh, especially important in, in, as we move into the future and the, the first life extension treatments uh, might become available. So then we all have to make a decision. Do we take this treatment or do we not take this treatment? Because moving forward, in 50 years from now, we have all the data, um, but then it's going to be too late for us. So everybody, each of us has to make a decision on how to keep yourself healthy to um, really use all this advanced technology that's coming down the pipeline. So um, the knowledge base is curated by core community members that um, uh, apply all that knowledge uh, to our own. And of course, it's free and um, in the um, spirit of open source, uh, available to everybody. Um, it's published on foreverhealthy.org. And um, about until uh, more than a year ago, that was uh, the, the sole focus of, of the small community that has um, uh, established itself around that idea. Um, and uh, I personally was well aware about uh, all the um, developments that were uh, ongoing, and particularly the engineering approach of the Sense Research Foundation and, and uh, the approach of Aubrey de Grey um, to repair the damage that the body does to itself in an engineering way um, to cure aging directly clicked with me, and I instantly felt, yeah, that's the way to go. Um, and I just watched it and I said, well, it's going to happen. And then, but it, it, uh, then at, at, some point, um, at some point in time, I realized, hey, this is not going to happen by itself. And I realized how severely underfunded, uh, unfortunately, this whole uh, area of research is. And um, then I decided to contribute in, in a real meaningful way. And um, uh, I, I realized that uh, staying healthy is not enough. For, for each of us. I think we should do both. We should bring ourselves to the future by staying healthy, that's one thing. On the other hand, we should bring the future to ourselves by accelerating re research and by supporting startup, startups that take that research and turn that into therapies uh, for human use that we can apply to ourselves. So getting into the whole support thing for me was a step-by-step -step process. My first step was to create a non-profit uh, foundation, the Forever Healthy Foundation. I did this about one and a half years ago. And uh, by the end of 2015, um, I did the first step. Um, I supported Reason from Fight Aging in his uh, end of the year fundraiser for 2015. And together with other people uh, putting money in there, we raised uh, in co um, combination with the um, life extension community $250,000. Um, for the Sense Research Foundation. Um, through that, uh, I got into contact with Oishin, um, that is uh, a startup working on senescent cell clearance. And since uh, I personally am in the venture capital business, uh, I wanted to support them. I took part in uh, the inaugural financing of Oishin, helped to uh, bring the company along. And so that was our first investment in, in um, startups. 
in, 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 this, um, uh, in this area. And through do, doing these steps, um, it became clear to me um, what, what should be done, what, what we should have to do. So for, for me, it was clearly a step-by-step -step process that, that brought me to that point. I think we should really need to do, thing, to do two things. Uh, we need more people to contribute um, resources and speaking money to the creation of cures for the root causes of aging. We cannot wait for, wait for the government to not, not in, in the US, not in Europe, not, every, not, not nowhere, to, uh, until the government funds that stuff. The government will only fund that stuff, from my, my feeling in Germany, when a lot of people in, in the population are for that, otherwise pol politicians won't move. Um, so I think it's to the private sector, and I especially think it's for wealthy individuals who, in their own interest, well, should contribute to that thing. And on the other hand, I, being a techie from the internet space, I, I imagine we should have a whole rejuvenation biotech industry uh, like, this, like the internet, like the software industry with the self-accelerating feedback loop of success stories, um, uh, VCs investing in, 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 in startups that uh, cre creating exit, uh, exit opportunities, um, uh, that in turn creating new opportunities for scientists, uh, for, for researchers, for entrepreneurs, and for VCs to invest again. And that has perfectly worked um, for the tech and for the internet business. And I think we should put all our efforts together to create such an industry for, for rejuvenation biotech, because that will really accelerate once we get this machine going and people seeing the real potential. And this is also um, why I have structured the gift um, to, to the life extension community as a two-part thing. The first part is to um, really advance research by uh, contributing $5 million uh, as $1 million per year over five years to the Sense Research Foundation um, from my Forever Healthy Nonprofit Foundation. And on the other hand, using my for-profit venture capital business and setting aside a budget of $5 million at least and say, hey, this is for super early stage, extremely high risk investments in uh, rejuvenation biotech startups to get them off the ground. Because from my experience in the venture capital business, I know that the first round of financing, when you have to go out there and you don't have any investor committed to your, to your startup, it's really hard to, to raise money. So I thought it would be a good thing to step in there and say, hey, we are committing the first, let's say, 35% uh, of what you want to raise, and then you can go out and say, hey, I've already got one investor who is really willing to invest in, in, into, into my startup. So, and I think if we do these two things, have money for research, create uh, a research result, and then uh, create startups to um, uh, uh, take that research and, and try to turn, turn into therapies, um, that's the way to go. And I really hope that, um, uh, meanwhile, by the way, we've, we, we've done our second investment in i Therapeutics, uh, who are working on AMD. Um, and I hope that one of these companies or any other co startup in that field, whether we invested in or not, uh, has a success because I think this really will change things dramatically once the public realizes, hey, this is not fringe, this is not nothing from the science fiction, this is really happening. If we can rejuvenate a human being visually uh, and, and, uh, and by measuring biomarkers, this is really, I think, um, uh, going to change the perception uh, of what the science, uh, the science community is, is working on and, and talking about. Um, so I'm really, really happy with my decision to support um, the Sense Research Foundation because I really think um, that is, uh, uh, for me, it was the right thing to do and uh, extending our healthy lifespan is, is the right thing to do. I, I have given um, several talks in Germany and elsewhere about that um, issue and people have all, a lot of co counter arguments. Um, for not extending the healthy lifespan and whatever, you probably heard them all. Uh, but I think um, they, they don't really cut because uh, I think extending the healthy lifespan is the real thing to do. Um, it's not only, of course, we all want to live a, a healthier life, but it's not only for us. There are so many other aspects in uh, extending our healthy lifespans. One, for example, being 
um, the burden, if we get sick and if we get uh, uh, age-related disease, that puts a real burden on, on our loved ones. My grandma uh, died of Alzheimer's and in the end she didn't rec recognize my mother and my brother and, and everybody around her and that was really, really stressful for the whole, uh, for the whole family. So we, if we get sick, we put a lot of burden on our loved ones. But if you can cure aging, instead of putting a burden on them, we take them with us. We can take them with us into the future where aging is a thing of the past. Um, curing aging um, and extending a healthy lifespan will fuel our knowledge-based uh, uh, economy. I always imagine uh, engineers, scientists, managers, entrepreneurs at the age of 65, 70, who are as mentally sharp and fit physically fit as they were at the age of 35, but they have 35 more years of experience. This is going to be a huge uh, economical advantage. Of course, um, it will uh, release the uh, pressure from our pension system and not to speak of um, decreasing our healthcare spendings radically. And um, of course, it will massively, massively ease the suffering that age-related diseases put, uh, will put on all of us. We, we tend, we, we, usually we tend to um, put this aging thing and this getting sick thing out of our minds, but if we are truly honest, we are all going to be that person in a wheelchair. We are all going to be that person who is going to get up in the morning with aches and, and our sight's going to vanish and all that things. They are all gonna, uh, going to happen to us. And um, last not least, I think um, uh, uh, extending our healthy lifespan will profoundly um, uh, change our outlook on life. Um, right now we deal with, for, let's say, uh, environmental pollution or climate change um, uh, as, as things that they don't concern us. But if we're here for uh, 100 or 200 years, our feet will get wet if the polar cups melt. So I think uh, if we stay around for much longer, it will also foster a, a long-term thinking. Uh, so all in all, I think extending the healthy lifespan is the most ethical thing that we all together can do, and I think it's the most exciting and the most rewarding challenge that an intelligent human being can nowadays take up. And um, I want to close with thanking you all so much for putting all this effort into the science and into uh, the, the structure and into the foundations and all who are in this room to try to make this happen. Thank you.